Welcome back to day two of the OER World Congress and we have another interesting interview partner with us. We are doing a little series on how does OER all over the world look like and one really interesting country could be India because it's a huge country and there are different languages and probably there are huge challenges and a huge potential but that's what our guests should explain us uh, and She is really into open education. She was the uh, f one of the founding members of Wiki Educate in India. She helped relaunching the Creative Commons licenses there. Uh, she is actually uh, um, with the Delhi University. And her name is Savitri Singh. Last thing, the most important thing. Thank you for taking your time. You're Can you give us some insights about OER in India? Yeah, uh OER came into India in a very, for me, in a very indirect way. I was working on a project with the Indira Gandhi Open University, a collaborative project. We were, some of us were together trying to write some content. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Commonwealth of Learning representative came there and showed us the wiki educator. And somehow it was just like, you know, a fish getting water. I just swam and dug deep into the wiki educator world and started learning to understand it. And next I knew I was teaching courses on wiki educator, what wiki educator is, what's the syntax, how do you write it and why we should be using it. Mm -hmm. And call came to know about this, this activity and simultaneously at the same time some people in Indira Gandhi National Open University had also come into this space. And call then put us together and we formed a group and then we launched the Wiki Educator India Note. This was in 2008. So that's somewhere where the OER movement started in India. And we were happy later when the National Mission on Education using ICT, a government mission with tons of money, They made a statement in their um, introduction that they want to all the materials to be created in a wiki kind of materials. So, I mean, we were happy because a wiki kind of material is an open education resource, though they didn't use the term open education resource. But around after 2009, 10, there were groups in India that started making open content and really open education resource and primarily we could talk about uh, Bombay IIT. They made uh, something like open tutorials, uh, then uh, Oscar, some of these projects. Who were they? There were professors in the university who were part of the national mission on education using ICT. So that happened. I mean, of course, the free open software movement was in a big happening in a big way in India. So these are all uh, things that work on the same principle that things should be available freely to the people. And um, so uh, gradually the number of people in this movement kept increasing and uh, we uh, tried to spread this and but we were not able to get a government policy out on this. I mean Uh, the but I think in 2013, yeah, exactly. In 2013, the uh, then minister, deputy minister for education, he released. I mean, he uh, launched a website for school materials on a site called Nas uh, National Resource for Open Education Resources (NROER) and licensed CC by SA. That was a great achievement for the community. And um, then, I think uh, last year, uh, the enemy ICT also formally decided that all their materials should be openly licensed. So, enemy ICT is a government-funded project, and their stand was, of course, if the government is funding the project, you better give it out into the freely to the people. So, at the moment, that's the position. We haven't got a governmental policy on it. I mean, we have one mission having that policy, but not the government. So we are waiting for that. 
but I am happy that the government is insisting that they spend their money. If you are buying software, it has to be open source software. So we are going in the right direction, and I'm sure we'll reach there. And we and we need open educational resources in our country very badly. Why? Oh God, the diversity we have in the. Uh, number of languages, the cultural aspects, uh, the class differences, the, the haves and the have-nots. The difference between the haves and the have-nots is so much that there's a huge community out there that can't afford books. And if we can get them, reach materials to them through open education resources, uh, the education in the country will improve. Do you know that only about uh, 23% of the people who are eligible to be in colleges are in colleges? They, 23%. Rest of them are not doing anything. And in India, open and distant learning is also big. And in that space also, if we have op open education resources, it will be much better. And uh, open education resources are also important because we can freely translate them, contextualize them. And for a country like India, where we have 22 official languages and 724 dialects, it's important if we can translate. Thank you. Thank you. All the best for your work. Hope to see you again. Yeah. Thank